Hi, um, I'm uh, Stephen Bailey. I've been asked to say a few words about the Holman Hunt um, self-portrait um, in the Athenaeum. Uh, forgive me for the rather patchy quality of this um, this video, even though it's a Works of Art Committee production, it's being done on a phone on a wobbly miniature um, um, easel. So anyway, let's carry on. Anyway, look, this, um, uh, what a strange man Holman Hunt was. He was born in Shoreditch in 1827 and became a member of the Athenaeum in 1868, just seven years before uh, this enigmatic self-portrait was um, was painted. The original was in fact donated to the Uffizi in Florence in 1907 and remained almost completely the unknown until 1971 when it resurfaced in an exhibition about Florence and the English. Now this Florence and the English is of course is a story entirely um, you know um, entirely um, entirely in itself. Uh, Victoria for instance was a frequent visitor and it was reckoned that in the late 19th century uh, fully a third of the population of the city was actually English and Holman Hunt himself was a part-time resident encouraged to go there by the great art critic um, John, John Ruskin. Um, and of course it was Ruskin who was the inspiration for the creation of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood of which Holman Hunt was a, was a, was a founder member along with uh, John Everett Millet, Dante Gabriel Rossetti and um, Edward Byrne-Jones. The idea of these pre-Raphaelites uh, was against a background of Victorian industrialization, which Ruskin certainly deplored, was to discover or rediscover the assumed purity of Italian art in the time before Raphael. Anyway, this was in 1848 when they formed the Brotherhood, the year of other revolutions and upsets in Europe, of course. Um, but the pre-Raphaelites, they were rather an odd bunch, to say the very least. They thought of themselves as a secret society, uh, but actually published a popular newsletter. And so much for a secret society, their, their pictures now hang in almost every civic gallery um, in the country. And of course, so far from rediscovering antique simplicity, their art is in fact a perfect exemplar of high Victorian sensibility. Holman Hunt's own paintings, which used a bright white undercoat to achieve their astonishing luminosity, couldn't have been realised without an awareness of the newly emerging art of photography. And indeed, in 1974, an American scholar called George P. Lander, rootling through a trunk in somebody's attic, found a photograph which actually appears to be the source of this very self-portrait. But at the same time, Holman Hunt, I told you he was an enigmatic and contrary individual, uh, he despised that other witness of modernist sensibility, Impressionism. Um, the French movement depended, of course, on capturing momentary effects of, of light and, 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 and transitory stuff, whereas Holman Hunt was much more determined to try and understand deep structures to the extent of actually boiling a horse once just to get down to its, um, uh, to reveal its skeleton. And he was different to other members of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood as well, because while the rest of them sort of specialise in a gloriously sort of murky and uh, medieval, melancholy eroticism, all about romantic death and Ophelia and you know, dying in her bath, uh, the pious Holman Hunt studied the Talmud and travelled widely in the Holy Land. Indeed, his best-known painting uh, is the extremely Christian Light of the World, which is now in Keeble College, Oxford. And, of course, if you want to say idea of Holman Hunt's sensibility, my, one of my favourite paintings, and favourite in all its awfulness, is his um, Awakening Conscience, uh, which is now in Tate Old Fashion, Tate Old Britain, on um, Millbank. Um, I love this painting because it's, uh, it, 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 it tells you everything you need to know about, about Victorian sensibility. It's a moral tale. The young woman is a, is a kept woman, a strumpet, and she's sitting on the, uh, the, the knees of her, of her lover. And a chance chord struck on the piano awakes her conscience. And I loved it that what Rutten, Rusting said about it. He said, you can tell that the man is a cad because of the fatal newness of the furniture. You know, Victorian snobbery doesn't, uh, doesn't get any more magnificent um, than that. Holman Hunt, anyway, remained doggedly true to pre-Raphaelite principles um, throughout, uh, you know, throughout his very long career. Um, and this self-portrait, uh, the one with the one in the club, it's actually the very finest self-portrait by any member of the pre-Raphaelites. Uh, it was conceived as a companion piece to his portrait of his wife, Fanny Waugh, who died in Florence just before Christmas 1866. Now, Fanny was actually an ancestor of Evelyn Waugh, uh, the non-comic novelist whose very first book was a study of Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Thus, our best comic novelist was actually immersed in the oddities of pre-Raphaelite culture. And War was absolutely merciless about Holman Hunt. He had, War said, uh, very few friends and was evidently not a likeable person. Aloof and pompous were the words used. Max Beerbohm, meanwhile, found Holman Hunt 
plebeian and patronising. So there you go. Uh, War said he was in his work as apparently in his life notably lacking in the wish to please. The pictures, War believed, were ugly. Yet humorless as Holman Hunt may have been, uh, he was an athletic womaniser, and if success is the right word, he was very, very successful in this pursuit. Perhaps pompously, the self-portrait represents him as a saint and a sage, as well as a proud and imposing painter, signified by the palette he's holding in his hand. But what exactly is being said here? Here's a painter of international repute presenting himself, an interpretation of himself, not obviously to a client, it's done for him, it's done for himself, this painting, but as some sort of visual memorandum of an astonishing career. What is it? What is it, an apologia? Say what you like about ugliness, but Holman Hunt was a man who created images by which the 19th century will always be remembered. Before he died in 1910, he presented this copy of his self-portrait to the Athenaeum. But when a curator from the Uffizi came to see it uh, 15 or so years ago, the curator wondered which was the original and which was the replica. So identical were they. But Hunt had a history of making copies. His Light of the World uh, from Keeble College went on a hugely successful uh, world tour. I'm not saying he was duplicitous to go with his other um, vices, just that he was a, a pre-Raphaelite artist in a culture which invented mass production. As I say, what we've got here is an enigmatic portrait of an enigmatic individual. <laughs>